Hello Internet, today I wanted to take a really quick look at Raycasts. They are probably one of the more standard ways of detecting collisions with things, uh, especially if you're making a shooter or things like that. Um, basically think of them as laser pointers. You can point a, a line from a point to in some other direction and see what it hits. Um, Unity gives you a number of ways to do this. The two main ones either shoot a laser pointer or shoot some sort of Death Star laser cannon that goes through everything and returns the entire list of objects in whatever that pointer's uh, direction is. Um, there are a number of ways to tweak this, um, and typically this this functionality is used in like shooters, I guess, for, for projectiles or hit scanning or whatever else you wanted to use it for. Um, there are also a number of variants of this. Uh, box casting, capsule casting, and sphere casting are supported in Unity, uh, and they're the same thing, uh, except instead of shooting like a laser pointer, you are shooting this sphere object or this box or capsule or whatever else it is. Um, it's, it's the same idea. It's just using actual larger objects uh, and, and more complex math to make that work. Uh, so we are going to effectively just implement this and update this collision point to where we're colliding so we can see it in our scene. Right now, that isn't happening at all. So we just have uh, this script attached to some game object and it's just sitting in our scene, and so we want to actually be able to collide with it. Um, so what we're going to do is actually start just implementing this. Um, there are really two ways to do this. Uh, if we look at the physics raycast option, you can see raycast all is the other one, the, the Death Star <laughs> of, of raycasts. Um, so there's two real options here. There are providing a ray or a vector three, which is an origin and direction. Um, you can do either one. I like to create rays personally, just because it's a little bit cleaner. I, it honestly just probably shouldn't matter, but uh, just just the way that I do it. Um, so we're gonna do that. We're just gonna do var ray, which is a new ray. And this expects an origin and a position. So we're just gonna do this transform dot position and this transform bot dot forward. Uh, and you can see it labeled origin and direction for us. So we have this. Um, Physics.raycast returns a boolean, uh, which means we have no way of knowing what we hit. There's no way for us to get this information back. Um, and really the most basic way of doing a raycast is just physics.raycast and then the ray you want to cast. That will send an infinitely long ray through your scene and return true if it hits anything in your scene. Um, so you can use that to detect if there's something there. Um, but I don't honestly use this very much because you don't get any information back about what you hit. Um, so if you're trying to detect like an enemy or something, there's no way for you to actually use this to do that because you, you don't know what you hit. Um, so there are a bunch of these overloaded functions that provide different ways to do this. Um, we can also limit the length of the ray. Um, so if you have a maximum range, for example, you can limit that uh, ray cast to a specific length. Um, and it won't return hits beyond that. Another thing to keep in mind, um, we are attaching this to a game object. That point could be inside of another collider. Raycasts will not hit uh, colliders that they are inside of. Um, so if you are inside of a box, for example, and you shoot a raycast from inside that box, you will hit the next object outside of that box. Uh, or if there is nothing there, you will not hit anything at all. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so we need to actually get something back. Uh, the easiest way to do this is with the raycast hit. Uh, if you use raycast all, this is already returned for you, but it isn't with just the normal raycast. Uh, and the normal raycast is what I end up using most of the time anyway. Um, because this is an output variable, we'll get to those in a sec, um, but output variables do not do uh, normal stuff. You cannot initialize this or you will get an error. Uh, Basically what this is saying is uh, the function expects a extra parameter being passed into it. In this case, the raycast hit object, and it will populate that for us. If we give it a value that already exists, um, that, that isn't how you're supposed to do that. Uh, and the compiler is going to raise a warning and an error for you uh, just because generally if that happens, you're doing something you probably didn't actually want to do. Um, so. Raycast returns a Boolean. This is sort of a um, safe programming style. Uh, this way, you don't get an, a null value in this hit if you didn't hit anything. 
Um, because typically what we're going to want to do is say, shoot array, if we hit something, then do this. Um, because this returns a Boolean, that function ends up, ends up looking a little bit like this. Uh, and so we get if physics.ray cast this, uh, then we can work with the hit object inside of here. Um, we, aren't, we don't have a hit object yet, so we need to actually populate that. So we're just going to do out hit. And that is our value there. Uh, there are a number of other overloads here. So we can also provide a maximum distance. So if we want to do like 100 or something like that, uh, we can limit that. One of the other useful things that you can provide to these raycasts is a layer mask. Um, so you may have seen layers in Unity's Inspector. This allows you to place different objects on separate layers in the scene. Um, you can customize those and do whatever you want with them. Um, but you can use this as a way to limit what your, what your raycast is going to hit. If you only want to hit other enemies, for example, you can use this as a way to do that. Um, keep in mind that means if you only limit it to enemies, you'll, you'll shoot through walls. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Um, but you can use layers to kind of filter things. So if you don't want to hit the player with your own projectiles, you can use this to limit that and not even detect them at all when, you, when you're shooting from your player. Things like that are an option. The easiest way to do that is actually, uh, it says it's an integer value. But in Unity, you can actually use a public layer mask. Uh, and so this is a special um, struct. And it is actually just going to be uh, customized in Unity. So it will actually give you a matrix of fields. So I can actually just make this. We're not going to use it uh, just because uh, uh, I don't want to. <laughs> um, but you can, you can use this to customize it. And it makes it easier than working with an integer. So I recommend using the layer mask for that if you need to. Um, but this is sort of what we're going to do. Uh, our raycast will populate hit if it hits something. Otherwise, that will be null. Um, so if the raycast would miss, it's just going to be null and we, we don't do anything. Um, but if we do, then we have this, all this information for us. Um, so we have the transform of what we hit. Uh, we have a bunch of other things. Uh, the distance, the normal of the point that you hit, the point that you hit, the rigid body if you hit one of those. Um, you also have texture coordinate and berry center coordinate, which you can use to actually figure out like where on a texture map of an object you may have hit. Um, those might be a little bit more complicated. Um, but really what you tend to want is either the transform or the point. Uh, from the transform, you can actually get the game object that you hit. Um, so we can actually do hit.gameObject. Uh, we can just print this out, so debug.log. We'll just do that. Uh, this gives us a way to kind of log that out. Uh, we can actually just make this public and not even do a log. We can just do game object hit. Uh, we'll do last hit. So the last object we hit is going to be equal to this. And then uh, we also need to move that little gizmo that I added. So we are going to add that. Uh, and that is just going to be the collision point equal to the hit dot point. And so if we go and run this now, uh, I need to make sure we call the update in the gizmo. It is an update function and we're not actually running our game, so it would never run. Um, this way, if I, by adding it here, we don't need to run it. Um, or uh, probably a much, much better choice. Uh, that would cause it to duplicate it when we actually ran the scene. Um, but what we can do is just do this, go to our scene. Uh, and so I have a point here. And we can rotate this. And so you can see the, the Z vector, the blue vector uh, of the object rotating. What we're going to expect is that it will change. And that red wireframe circle is going to move when I actually start running this. Um, so if I click play, we'll actually start getting updates eventually. There we go. Uh, and so we should be able to sort of move this around. And you can see we're actually shifting where we're hitting uh, and the last hit is changing as well um, to cover the layer mask this is what it ends up looking like these are all of the layers in my scene these are the unity defaults you can't change many of these um, but you can modify them here just go add layer uh, and this you can actually just select everything that you want to include uh, and and do do it that way uh, so this gives you actually a nice inspector ui 
Whereas if you're doing an integer, um, good luck. Um, it's a little bit more complicated that way. So this is this is much nicer. Um, so yeah, that is that is I guess the basics of raycasting. Uh, you can do a whole bunch with this, uh, but this is sort of intended as sort of a way to introduce the concept and allow you to kind of see all of that. Uh, I've done much more advanced things with this. So if you want to see like projectile reflection or uh, bullet drop or things like that, uh, there are there are videos on that on this channel. Um, and I will leave some links to those uh, in the end screen so you can go and check those out. Uh, but I think that's it for this video. So I will leave it here. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, otherwise, consider joining our Discord. There's a link in the description. You can come and hang out and share what, what you're working on, uh, have, ask any questions you have, uh, and just hang out. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So until next time, see you, Internet.